I started to talk about how when we leave things for now or get interrupted while we're putting something away, it often leads to piles of clutter around the room, um, around whatever space it is. And our tendency is to let that go for a little while once we realize, oh, I didn't finish that, I'll do it later, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it on the weekend. And then other interruptions keep happening. So that pile gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And how to stop that is to actually start thinking about your process. What is it that would make it easier to not leave it till later? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I also want to talk about how our tendency when these piles of clutter come up is to take that time at the end of the week or, or tomorrow and think we're going to solve it by rearranging it. So we don't really organize it or make a decision. We just pick it up from where it's in our way and we put it down in another place to deal with later. So it's a self-perpetuating thing. It goes from here to there and over there and back here. And then one day you're like, where did I put my keys? Where did I put my bills to pay? They've been moved all over the house, so you don't even know where to look. Now you're looking in 87 different places instead of the one place where you keep that thing, right? So the first piece to help stop rearranging is to define that space. Where are the keys going to go? Are they going to live in the deadbolt lock on the door, a hook next to the door, a drawer, your purse, your um, a tray on the entry table? Where are the keys going to live? We don't have this problem with everything, which is why I find it so funny that people struggle with this, because we know for sure the ice cream goes in the freezer, right? We don't ever accidentally put it in the bathroom or we don't leave it on the entry hall. We know it goes in the freezer, so it's more likely to end up in the freezer. That's all defining your space is, is actually looking for the place it makes sense for that thing to be. Sometimes we have... Um, a tendency to have things in more than one place, thinking it's gonna be more convenient that way. If I have scissors in 12 different places, I will always have scissors when I need them. While that sounds great on the surface, this is one that totally depends on how you process things and how much space you have. It totally makes sense to have a second vacuum upstairs if you have carpet and rugs upstairs. It does not necessarily make sense to have 87 pairs of scissors all over the house because you will never put them away. You'll just kind of in the back of your mind always be thinking, there's another pair around somewhere. Let me go look for them. Instead of knowing I only keep scissors in the knife block, in the desk drawer, and um, maybe a pair in the closet for taking tags off. You have to define where you're going to put things so you know where to return things once they're used. That way, even if you get interrupted, you get to go back to it and pick up where you left off and know where you're going with those things instead of feeling overwhelmed and like you have to leave it again till later. Um, one of the things that you can check out is the One Minute Mail Solution. It is the free um, resource on the website. So it's morethanorganized.net slash mail. That's M-A-I-L dash I-N dash one O-N-E. Um, it has a whole cheat sheet on how to set up a bill processing center. And it works for all the different electronic information and um other pieces of information that come in the mail. And so it will get you in the practice of setting up a designated spot and putting those things in those spots on a regular basis. That's why I recommend it. It doesn't apply just to the mail. It's just the starting point. 